Hello everyone and welcome back to the 19th part of the course in which we will be making the Blade of the Ancients from scratch using Blender. In the last video we unwrapped our whole blade, it was our handle, ornaments and the blade itself. And we placed them onto this texture space that is going to be the base part for all of our texturing. And you want to make each one of these islands as big as possible because the bigger they are on the texture space the more detailed the textures are going to be as you can see i just simply arranged them and made them on vertical so because if you just put them on the side well not like this i'm just showcasing it the textures will also go sideways so you want them to be like facing upwards like this and now We'll be going to the next part, otherwise the final parts of the blade. So we are going to be baking the high poly detail onto our low poly, otherwise this retopologized model, and we'll be texturing it. And we'll be texturing using Substance Painter, since it will be much easier and it will give us the results we want. So. The blade will look exactly like the one from the intro. You can also use Blender for texturing and baking, since these geometry nodes give you the ability to make various textures and it can also look amazing. But do not worry, Substance Painter has a free trial, so you do not need to own one to follow along in this video. And of course, I will guide you to the process of getting your free trial. You want to go to the Google, of course, and click on the Adobe one. As you can see, you also have the Substance Painter on Steam. About that a bit later, so click here. And then you have this option, free trial. Otherwise, you can buy it now. And there are different ways to pay for the Substance Painter. So you can pay it monthly. For this price or you can pay it annually otherwise once a year but you want to click on free trial and you just don't get substance painter you get other things so you can see the substance is also is here but it's also here and then it's like 20 dollars a month but the free rate trial lasts for a whole month so 30 days so you can pick a subscription otherwise it's monthly and then you can pay it annually. But you can see down here, you can cancel the monthly subscription anytime with no fee. And then here you have no refund if you cancel after three day, 30 days. You want to pick the subscription you want and continue. Then you will be presented with the email. So whichever email address you enter, that's where you're going to find the Substance Painter which you will then download onto your computer. Once you've done that, back into Blender because there are a few things we need to do before we get our blade into substance. So first we want to shade smooth our low poly. Select all of them, right click, shade smooth. Do not worry if it looks like this because since we'll be making the high poly onto it, it will just look the same what matters here is the general shape then we also want to do one more thing and that is make separate materials for all of this since the substance painter can take the data otherwise the materials to make like separate texture sets so for example if we put a texture on the handle the blade and the ornament will not get colored and you'll see that later, it will make much more sense. So you want to go here and into the material properties, click on new. I'll name it because that name will also be displayed in Substance Painter. I'll call it handle, not handle, handle. Then let's add another one for the low poly. Let's call it ornament. And then let's add the one for blade. Okay, that's literally it. We don't have to do anything else with the materials. 
And now to the exporting part. So we want to export the low poly and our high poly separately. So first you want to have the low poly on, you want to select it, then go to the file, so save the project, why not? Then go under here, you want to find the export tab, and you have multiple options. So the ones you primarily use are OBJ, Wavefront, or FBX. And the difference between those two, well, FBX is recommended if you want to preserve your vertex colors, rigs, cameras, animations, and there's much more complex data. And the FBX works for many other programs such as Unity or Unreal. And OBJ is more like the one you use for just steel materials, like uh, these are blades. So it will preserve the mesh data and that is about it. It's much simpler. But I will use the FBX as this one. So let me click on FBX. You want to find the file where you're going to export your textures. You can see I have it under exported. And then you want to rename it. So you're going, yours is going to be something like this. And what you want to do is, well, feel free to add this downline and type in low or high. AdWords define the prefix it's called. And you want to also configure some of these settings here. So you want to limit it to selected objects. In other words, it is going to literally export the cameras, the MCs, and even the high poly all in one setting. And you do not want that because that's bad, okay? It's bad. Here we have object types, which is not really important to configure since you have limited the exports to the selected objects. Under here, you have also the transform, scale, geometry, armature. This should all be fine. You can disable other leaf bones and bake animations since we do not have any of these. And then once you have selected it, just export it here. And you can see that didn't even take a few seconds. But now we need to do the same thing with the high poly. And do not worry, okay, of course, make sure the high poly is shade smoothed. Do not worry, you do not need to unwrap your high poly or to put any other materials on it, since we are just going to be using it for detail. I repeat, you do not have to do anything with the high poly except now once you've done it to export it so you want to go to the file as well export and of course choose the same one you did before i will change the prefix to high hi hi <laughs> i will make this selection the same i will just put it here as you can see the high poly is a much bigger file size but that is of course normal and when you export the high poly do not panic it's going to freeze the blender or lag it depends on how detailed your object is and he says it's not responding but it is responding just give him a minute to calm himself down and you can see everything is fine as i told you and yes 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 i wanted to tell you about the steam version so I have the Steam version because it's one time payment only. So you pay once for Substance and then you have it. You have the same version and you can literally use it forever. But the, that's the fact, you have one version. So I'm using like Substance Painter 2022. But now you can simply close Blender or just minimize it. And here you are. Yes, I'm playing the I'm playing Substance Painter. Funny. You're presented with this. And well you just close it. And here it is, the viewport. As you can see down here already, they are these are like default materials. You have a bunch of smart materials. About that later, it's pretty amazing. So to get the blade into our viewport, you want to click on file. 
and new. And you have uh, some things you can configure. So, but first we have templates, and they are the ways that our textures are going to be baked and stuff. So, you have the presets for other engines, Lens Studio. You have the one for Unreal and also Unity. The PBR ones are for Blender. So, the best one is PBR Metallic Roughness Starter Assets. And then under here you want to select the file so you want to select the low poly because later we will bake the high poly detail onto our low poly so select it under here under document resolution i will put it at 4k and which is amazing about substance painter is at any given time you can change your resolution so you can start with a lower resolution change it to higher then change it to low again but i'll go with 4k normal map format this is important you want to click it on opengl so DirectX is literally a reverse mapping from opengl so blender uses opengl direct x is for some other softwares okay this all should be fine and you can also import bake max for example if you baked in blender or any other software you can add your maps here you want to press ok and voila our blade is here and you can see the materials we made are now a texture sets which is amazing and of course let me give you a quick tutorial how to move in the viewport if you press alt you can see here this is the only way you're going to get the greencast keys you can see here with holding OFT, ALT button and dragging the left, left mouse button, we rotate around the object. ALT and right mouse button, we zoom in and zoom out, which we can also do with the scroll wheel. And look what is amazing. So let me just point my cursor here. So I want to zoom in into this part. It automatically does it. So it zooms in wherever you put your cursor, which is amazing i love it so i love it and now if i press alt you can see there are other things we can also do so our blade now is here so if i hold alt and middle click i can move it back and then you can also for example if you get into a weird upside down view you can just press f and we will rest the camera well it will not rotation but the camera so f let's repeat again scroll wheel to zoom in and zoom out alt left click to rotate and then alt and middle click to pan around your object like this and now let's get to the baking tab so under here you can drag this here and under texture set settings, if you scroll all the way down here, you have this option called bake mesh maps. That's the one thing that's really interesting to me is because the most important option is Substance Painter. It's basically hidden from your view, so you just need to like find it somewhere. It's like a gold digging. So you want to click on bake mesh maps. There are many parameters. I'll put the resolution to 4K. We can even go up to 8K, but 4K is enough now. And what you want to do is high definition meshes. You want to click here and add the Blade of the Ancients height. And then you have a lot of options you can configure. Let's go over some. So if you have trouble with baking your the normal map, you can configure the max frontal or rear distance. Okay, let's go to the world space normal. It does not have anything. ID, if you have vertex covers, you're going to select the vertex cover and it's going to be fine. But now we want material. Ambient occlusion should be fine. Curvature should be fine. Position and thickness. It's a lot of maps. And now what you want to do is click on bake, bake selected textures and let the magic happen. It might take a while, it might not. And if some maps do not bake, do not panic. Because sometimes the ID and the world space normal won't bake, but 
it won't make much difference anyway. And you can see it in the process, it's just doing the perfect bake, it's just, it's amazing. Look at it! I'm so excited, I'll, this is like one of my favorite parts ever, you can just see it working, you can just see that your retopology was successful. And what is done? Okay. This is it. You can see this is our low poly and we have all of the details. Look at it. Oh my goodness. It's so amazing. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> I, it was just gone for a second. Well, feel free to just configure some of the tabs and you can see on, on each one of these you have this. So when you click this. You can just frill around, move it somewhere else, so which is literally good. You can configure your viewport much more easier than in Blender. And well, this is it for today. We have done so much in this video. It is very complex process. You need to make sure it works. And the texturing is also it's not as complex, but it will be better for me to split it in two videos you don't just have like a bunch of knowledge put into one video and you can be like what just happened i was in blender making textures and now i have a finished blade but just in case your bake is not okay for example i'm glad i have this you can see this thing here we call those artifacts it's like when something didn't bake as good it is because the UVs need to be tweaked back in Blender. But if the detail, detail is like the really minor, when we put on textures, it will not be noticed at all. I want to thank you for watching and following along. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. It really does help. And I hope to see you in the next and final episode of the Blade of the Ancients course. Bye bye.